Did you just buy an 11th gen Intel to find out that it drains too much power? It doesn't have to. Welcome to Simple Run. On this episode, I'm gonna take the i5 11600K and do my best to undervolt it. Now, never done anything like this, so this first time I'm doing it, doesn't mean I can't do it, doesn't mean you can't do it. Just means I've never done it before. So it might take me a little longer than normal. No worries. Now, I'm taking all of this and I'm throwing it in the Inwin B1. So this is kind of the part one to that build. So don't forget to subscribe so you can watch the rest of that build. Now the Inwin B1 comes with a power supply. And that power supply is 200 watts. So I've got to cram in a system that's going to maintain the 200 watts. The perk of that is, in such a small form factor case, I'm not going to be able to create a ton of heat because I don't have the wattage. But I still do have enough watts to create some heat. So I do have the 11600K. Now my goal is to turn off turbo frequency and get it as close to 4 GHz as I can. I don't know how possible this is because like I said, I've never done this. But I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to figure it out. And I'm going to get this to be as fast as this setup can be in under 200 watts. Realistically, I need to be, you know, under probably 180, 175 just to kind of give that room in the power supply to not be running at 100%. Now, I've never actually even used uh, the 11th gen Intel, so I don't really know what I'm going to be looking at with it running. Now, what I can say is this is extremely overkill for what my girlfriend is using this computer for. Most of what she's going to be doing is going to be Cricut and it's going to be her online store. And outside of that, you're probably looking at some Excel spreadsheets, some Word document, and a lot of Facebook. So to have this and to have the unlocked you know, K series, it's a lot. Now on top of that, I did get the G-Skill Royal Ram. One thing, she didn't want a lot of RGB. I really wanted to like make this case glow. Because why not? Well, I'll tell you why not. She doesn't want it. So what I did get is I got the G-Skill Royal Z Ram. It's pretty. I got two eight gigabyte sticks, so 16 gigs, more than enough for what she wanted. I talked myself down from doing 32 gigs. I was right there, I was gonna order it, and it was just, ah, I didn't do it. But it's gonna be, you know, overclocked RAM as well. And I guess I should say XMP RAM, because I'm not gonna overclock it past its 3200. But it's still gonna be plenty fast enough. Like I said, what she's doing is not demanding. I am hoping that I can get her into some form of gaming with this system as well. So it's kind of, you know, the sprinkle on of the overkill. We'll see if I'm successful in that. Now, one thing I have seen and I've heard a lot about, you know, 11th gen and I, I have 9th gen Intel on my build. It is hot. And, you know, I've got the 10600K that I use for testing coolers and it is hot. So I'm going to bet that this is going to be really hot. So, I have modded the case, you'll see that later, but on this, since it is important to what I am doing now, I've got the LH9 cooler for Intel, it's low profile, it's only, you know, 37 millimeters with the fan. Now, since the case has 60 millimeters of clearance, I've got the full size 92 millimeter fan. So it's 25 millimeters and it about doubles the airflow of the 15 millimeter fan. And as long as I can get that out of the case, it should be good. Now, what that does is it does allow me to, you know, play with the processor a bit, as long as I can keep the whole system under 200 watts. And I feel like I'm talking in circles. So, how about this? Let me get this put together. Let's get it on the test bench 
and let's see if I can do what I want to do even though I don't know what I'm doing but I'm gonna try it anyway so we're gonna do this so as you can see Peter's now on the test bench and I've actually already got everything dialed in I expected it to be way worse than it actually was mainly because I'd never done it before and really didn't know what I was getting into. So I made a couple mistakes and I ended up figuring it out. And I've been testing everything on Prime 95. So essentially I'll go through, get into the BIOS, make my adjustments, run it on Prime 95, maybe Cinebench while I have CPU ID open and I'm, you know, checking and monitoring the hardware. So that way I know temperatures as well. Now I do have a small cooler because it's, you know, it's small form factor. That is also a limiting factor on how much power I can really push through that CPU without overheating. Of course, a small case is restrictive and you're only going to get so much airflow and putting the bigger fan might hurt that, but we'll get to that later when I actually do the build. As for this one, I think it's time I just walk you through what I did in the BIOS and show you just how simple it is to control your Intel when it wants to get power hungry. Okay, so this is what you see in the BIOS. This is just your basic, you know, set your XMP profile, so I do have the RAM booted up. It says that 3.9, which is, this is just standard. However, that was my goal starting this was 3.9. So we can go over to advanced mode will bring you here you go into OC tweaker then CPU configuration now what I did was this will be on auto I switched it to all core now this right here is basically so it says 39 now that means it's running at 3.9 if you were overclocking you'd come in and set it at you know 5.1 5.3 whatever it was that your goal is so it does have the turbo boost, which when I was originally doing this, I was going through and turning, you know, performances off, trying to see if that would do it. And that ends up taking off your overclock and messing with that. So the main features we're going to focus on is right here. So your power limit. Now this is your watts. So my power limit and my restrictions I have set is 85 watts. Now, there was a chance that 85 watts would not be enough to push it to 3.9. However, on this go through it was, and I don't know if I'm lucky or not, or if I just didn't set my bar high enough. Maybe I could run, you know, 4.2 at 85 watts. Nonetheless, it did start off with this at 125. Now, with these new Intels, you are hearing the complaints of too much power. Now, this is your short duration power limit. So I did up that a little bit. So if it wants to turbo boost in certain situations, it can. However, I set that at 95. When you first turn this on, that is set at 251 watts. And then you have the unlimited current limit. So I have this disabled, right? I don't want this thing using as much power as it wants to because I don't have that power there. However, if you were overclocking and you wanted to get disgusting with how much power you were pumping in this thing, you can turn that on and it'll limited current, you know. So if it wants 350 watts to boost to 5.3, then you should be able to do that. I'm not doing that. And really, this is all I had to do. I did not go know that going into it, so I was disabling turbo boost and speed shift and speed step and trying to turn off everything and all that was doing was resetting my overclock here which I wanted to stay so you know all core 3.9 and that turns on all your boost and I did this back and forth and screwed it up a couple times before realizing that all I had to do was come down here and set my power limit so if you want this to run at 65 watts like the 10 or the 11600 does you can do that Except you will get more power and you will still have all the functionality of the Z motherboard, which is really nice. So you can run your XMP in your features like that. So this is why I went this route. And that's it. 
So I didn't change anything. And of course, to be done, you'll F10. This would show you what changes you made. I did not make any. So, it, yes, sure. And it'll reboot from there. Start back up. And I will go through and show you my results. Okay. So now this is idle, sitting at roughly 45C for the overall temperature. And that is running at just shy of 3.9. And I'm only using 40 watts at the moment, I'm not doing anything. So we're gonna kick into Prime 95, which is going to essentially stress test. And it's gonna push your CPU harder than pretty much anything you're going to do. So I can get that started. And you can already see the temperature rise. So now I'm sitting at 56C. I'm still at 39, 3.9 gigahertz. And I'm at 75 watts. And this is stress testing. Now if it needs to, it can go higher, but it should sit at 3.9. It should just keep stress testing. Now that gives me my power window. And if I can keep these temps in the Inwin B1, I'll be very happy. And that's how simple it really is. Now, stress testing it for a while, it does gradually build up to the 85 watts, but it also maintains 3.9. And I believe the 11400 and 11500 are sitting around like 3.3 if you're not going with the, the K-series. And that was my whole goal, was to really just push as much as I could while staying, you know, with no graphics card and a 200 watt power supply. For Intel, that's really limiting, but it can be done. So if you want to spend the extra money to do something unnecessary like I did, you can. And it's really easy. And there are more videos than just mine if you're looking for other help too. So I continue to plan on learning and showing you guys what I'm learning and what I'm doing. And it's really, that easy to do it and I think that covers everything in this video so don't forget to like comment and subscribe uh, the next video I'm going to be doing the computer build so I've got to get this off of the test bench and move forward with getting it into the case and seeing what the temperatures are when I'm actually in the case instead of all of this open air that it's allowed right now so yeah thanks for watching